Welcome back to the D3 to D1 series at Nazareth uh, that I've been doing. Uh, it's been a while since I did my last post, uh, to be honest. It's been basically since the beginning of the season when I game planned. Um, recruiting's hit. I didn't do a recruiting video. So this one will probably be the recruiting video. Um, and also just a quick update on how everything went. Um, Let's just hit the the basics. Uh, we went 21 and five this season. Uh, just taking a quick peek here. Uh, three of the losses were in non-conference and two were in conference, which were a little confusing. Uh, at Hartwick here, when I was supposed to win by 11, and at uh, at Union, I was supposed to only win by two. So Union, Union is actually pretty good. They went 22 and four um, this season. Uh, but just taking a quick peek here. Uh, to see the reason why we might have lost here. Um, <clears throat> looking at the stats, uh, looks like free throws were big. Um, free throws were big. Overall rebounds were big. Points in the paint were big. And their bench was big. Right? Their bench had a big contribution so um, looking at that Hartwick is somebody I need to watch out for for the the uh, the conference tourney which is coming up here too uh, and then for Union obviously they did really well this season uh, theirs was free throws big um, I'm only really looking for the big difference the steals were big and their bench points were big so their bench did well uh, against my team so just some things to look at uh, nothing really to go into too much detail or play by play or go through every single thing because really you guys don't want to hear that um obviously i'm not ranked anymore which is a bummer but that being said still a pretty decent season in all uh or anytime you can get over 20 wins is a pretty darn good season um i'm still sitting at a point in the projection report to make the National tournament because I'm on the bubble. I'm number 53. Union is 58. So if I do well and maybe win the uh, conference tournament uh, from this bracket, I should be able to do that. Um, I got my number one seed. Should be fairly easy to be able to come through here. Uh, there's no teams here. The Union beat me, uh, and so did. Was it Alfred? No, could have been Alfred. Was it Hartwick? Hartwick. So I could be playing Hartwick. I can. Nope. Hartwick's over on this side. It's either going to be Union or Hartwick that I'll play. Uh, so I only have to worry about one of them. And I only have to worry about them in the conference championship game. So not a big deal there. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into recruiting. Okay. Um, I have already done most of my recruiting. Uh, as you can tell, I have the interest already set. Um, and I picked these guys. Remember at the beginning of the season, we talked about them. Um, you want, I wanted to go for Division One players because I'm such a good Division Three team uh, that I wanted guys that will at least be able to do well on my team and keep my team at the top of the brackets and, and everything that way. So um, Hubert Foster here is one of the guys I picked up. He's an ineligible uh, for D1, but if he went to my D3 school, he would be eligible. Right? He could actually play... Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, he's got very highs in athleticism and speed, which is what I like. I want him to get those up to over 60 to be the elite player I know he can be. Uh, 45, uh, decent, average, going to be an average uh, potential there. His perimeter and ball handling is very, very nice. Uh, and low post is decent. So, well, you know, he could be a pretty decent player over, over time. And so as far as recruiting goes, uh, you have a few options. Your first option is to scout, which you, you have to do, and, and I believe we talked about that already. Um, next is your attention points. This is like used to be your phone calls, things like that. This is where um, you might be calling, contacting your recruiter via email. You might be calling them. You might just be trying to say, hey, we want you to come here, and just trying to get their interest, which you have to do to, for every recruit now. Okay. And then the rest of these options, home visit, campus visit, promise start, promise minutes, informal register, and scholarship offer, have to be unlocked. 
okay? And you always unlock scholarship offer first. So you have to put a certain number of attention points in in order to get these offers to come up. So I had to put enough attention points in to get a scholarship offer, to get a home visit, to get a campus visit, so on and so forth. So what I did for this guy, because he's ineligible, he's really pretty darn good in comparison to the guys that I could get for my team. Okay. He, like, I'm not going to have anybody that I can really start over him if he came to my school. So I promised him to start. I promised him 10 minutes. Um, and I did this because of his preferences, what he's interested in. He wanted to play. He wanted to be near home, which is 63 miles from me. He wants success, which we're pretty good successful. Our conference could be better. Uh, and he wants to sign by the end of, end of period one. He probably won't because looking at his considering here, a lot of Sim D1 schools are interested right? But none of them are going to come close because I've started this guy since the first uh, very, very initial um, time. So I'm looking at, I'm probably going to get this guy because I've been going consistently and I'm only at the moderate level, but I need to get a little bit higher. Um, I've been continually pushing every every uh, round. Uh, look at Orlando trip here. I've done the same thing with him, with his preferences. Wants to play near home, 106 miles, successful paint offense because that's what we've been running. We've been running a paint offense. We I haven't been running any um, uh, players in terms of uh, outside players. Uh, zone, we run a zone. So this guy's pretty good. He's a late signee, so he's more than likely going to sign with me as long as I don't get any Division One schools trying to uh, snag him from me. But the same thing happened. I did attention points, scholarship offer, promise start, promise minutes. Um, I did a home visit and did a campus visit. Uh, and then I'm considering here, there's only a D2 school after him right now, and the D2 school is not getting very close um, at the moment anyways. Uh, and then here, I'm leading the pack, obviously, so I'm hoping this will uh, maintain true in terms of what I've been doing. So those are the options you have, but remember, you have to unlock the options in order to get there. Uh, I've never really recruited at D3, so I don't know if my strategy is going to work. I hope it will, uh, but essentially that's what we're looking at, is we're looking at doing those few little things uh, to be sure that we're going to get those players. And I hit them early, and I made sure that I had the late signing preference or you know, end of period one signing preference so that uh, they'll sign as soon as they can after the uh, either the first period or uh, or end of the end of the second period of recruiting because D1 players will not sign with a uh, D3 school until the second recruiting period. So no matter what I do, these guys that I've already picked up here won't sign with my school at all until second recruiting period anyway. So um, it's not a big deal. And Obviously, during second recruiting period, there's a possibility I could be at a different school. With that being said, should I move on from Nazareth to Division Two in one season, or should I try to create Nazareth and do this like powerhouse program uh, and just continue to discuss the Division Three and get and and uh, and make this a Division Three only video blog uh, to see where we can go from Division Three all the way uh, and see if I can take this team and keep them at the top. That would be something, the next kind of a question I'd have is, is do we want to make them come to the top and see if we can get a national title or do we want to uh, try to uh, move on and see if we can get up to a division one school as soon as possible. So uh, that's what, that's the question I have for you guys. Uh, I want love to hear from you. I want to hear it on the, uh, uh, the posts that we have. Uh, I do also want to point out that we are on the uh, re others receiving votes category. Uh, I will tell you now, every team I've ever played with, right before, generally right before the tournament, I'm on this list. Uh, my old Wyoming team, I'm on this list, which, by the way, I'm not at Wyoming anymore. I've moved on in my night world to uh, Colorado. So I've moved on. I'm no longer at Wyoming Um I, I, recruiting was just too difficult in that location I was at, so I, I moved to try to get a little bit better recruiting, uh, which surprisingly enough was only a few, few hundred miles south 
Uh, so I'm hoping I can get some better recruits because of that. Uh, so that's really the essence of what I've done. Um, other than, um, other than scheduling, um, I haven't really done scheduling, but essentially at this point, I usually schedule, um, I haven't really done it on this team. I won't even focus on my other one. Um, I generally do it about this time of the, uh, of the season. So let's do that because I generally go off of RPI rank. Once RPI comes out or, you know, midway through the season, I try to do RPIs to figure out who is a good team. And I generally click on them and I find, okay, I look at them and say, okay, uh, how many seniors do they have? How many juniors do they have come back? So this team here has a lot of juniors. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they should be, I would say decent. They're going to win a good 15 plus games. So I'm going to schedule them. And I want them to be in a way a game because I'm pro I could probably beat that team, to be honest. I probably could. Next year. Anyways, not this year, but next year, I probably could beat them because let's look at their juniors. Um, they're returning juniors. They're okay. They're not great, but they're okay. So um, I schedule that one on a away game. And I try to do a way home, a way home, but you can do whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, then you got all these guys up here that are just stellar uh, players. Marietta was surprisingly good this year. Um, and again, they're going to be fairly good. And um, they're not going to be that great. So I'm going to schedule Marietta to a home game. And again, I'm doing a lot of sim sim schools. You don't have to do sim schools. Um, some of the teams I have down here are are not sim schools right now. So, um, something to, to keep in mind there. Um, so be sure that you look at those things. And this team's gonna be terrible next year. So I'm not even gonna look at Aurora. Um, Looks like a lot of these schools that are doing this, these sims that are doing it, aren't really that good um, at all. Uh, this Rhodes team is, look at this guy, John Singletary, look at that. Has a D3 school, one thir number 137. Wow. The Rhodes is a good school. Colorado's good too. And these guys are phenomenal. I couldn't even compete with any of these teams. These teams are good for Division One teams that I've seen. Some Division One teams can well, wouldn't be able to beat these guys. Like uh, my Division One Colorado team right now couldn't beat these guys. So that's how good these guys are. So be sure that you are looking into these. And this is the longest part. So um, I'm probably going to stop this video because I don't want to... Uh, bore most of you with this information because um, I've basically gone over the essence of what I look for and it's it's not perfect uh, it's not gonna it's not easy but I do want schools where I'm gonna have somebody that's gonna these people are gonna be uh, high quality high quality teams that I'm gonna play uh, very very high quality uh, that's what I want um, so uh, if you have any questions, comment in the comment section or on the blog, and uh, happy coaching.